Hi there, and welcome to WOW Talk. My name is Donna. And my name is Darlene. And today we are going to talk about it's not just what you eat, it's how you eat. Absolutely. Okay, so <laughs> where do we begin? Oh, there's so many uh, angles on this one. I, I often talk to patients about how their digestive function changes over the day. So we make the most enzymes midday. So our body physiology was made to have the largest meal midday and the smaller meal in the evening. I totally agree with that. Yeah. We could say that many Europeans do it that way. I know Italians do. I come from that background. And I just want to tell you a little side story and then we'll get more into the science about it all, Dr. Gustin. (laughs) Uh, But when I went uh, to Europe, did my backpacking thing after I graduated from university, I had put on a few pounds. Um, I wasn't eating that well while I had been away at school, like away from home. So, you know, eating all that fast food and cafeteria food and, you know, having a few beers late at night and all that. Um, So I then went on this tour and there was a lot of walking involved, Mm -hmm. a lot of drinking water. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I noticed the most was I didn't worry about a diet at all. I ate the way people were eating in Europe. And so we started off in Italy and we would have a big meal at lunch every day. I wouldn't even be hungry for dinner at night. But if I was being social, I would end up having something small, very small. And I will tell you that I got into the most natural state, the natural shape and uh, health-wise, everything that my body was meant to be in. I could tell. And it happened naturally. Beautiful. (laughs) Thank you. (laughs) Yeah. So lifestyle medicine at its finest, right? (laughs) Absolutely. (laughs) Yes. Exactly. Exactly. So, So I have a whole bunch of these little tips when I talk to people about how to eat. And so I start with asking, you know, what does a typical day look like? So for a lot of people, um, there's a a late dinner after work. By the time parents come home, by the time you make it, by the time you eat it. And um, it's not really that healthy for us. And the good thing is that people are starting to realize that. So now what's become popular is intermittent fasting. Right? Yes. So periods of time where there are no calories consumed. So you could still have water, you could still have herbal tea or black coffee. And science is really starting to talk about the long list of benefits that these fasting periods have for us. And there's different benefits at different time periods. So, so the popular thing that a lot of my patients are doing is the 16 to 8 ratio, where they're having their two or three meals in an eight-hour window, and then there's 16 hours of fasting. So that whole messaging of breakfast is the most important meal of the day, there, it's not true. I believe that too. Yeah. I find also, of course, I'm bringing it back to me again, um, that... I'm not often hungry first thing in the morning. Exactly. Sometimes I am, but for the most part, I am not. It takes me a while till I'm ready to eat. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So so a lot of my patients, I'm giving them permission to skip breakfast. And I tell them, drink some water, have a herbal tea. Why force yourself to eat when you're not even hungry? Exactly. And and get to that magic 16-hour fasting period to, to start having some of the benefits of that. And um, and it's working. It's working. Incredible. Patients are losing weight. It's a, it's benefiting their blood sugar, their blood pressure, their body composition, and um, and that's really easy for most of us to do. But that's only one way of fasting. There are other patterns of fasting, and uh, I, I won't go into details on that because there were other things I wanted to bring up today. So, for instance, a lot of. Um, People are having issues with insulin resistance. They may or may not be a diabetic. And Could you explain what insulin resistance is, please? It's when the hormone insulin is having a hard time performing. The body's not responding to, to the insulin. Okay. And the reason insulin resistance is so popular is because it's the 
after effect of how North Americans have been living up until now, which was a lot of snacking. And every time you walk by the candy bowl at work, you just grab another little bite, grab a little piece of popcorn, grab a little tortilla chip, have a piece of fruit. Yeah. So every time you eat, insulin comes out to play. And insulin, um, this problem ca- can cause a package of problems, including blood sugar problems and obesity and blood pressure, etc. So the opposite of that is the time-restricted eating. And in those eight hours, you only eat two or three full square meals per day. And it's also been found that if those eight hours of eating are earlier in the day, it's even more effective. So to have brunch and an early dinner would be better than having lunch and dinner. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And then a lot of people these days are also benefiting from keto diets, which you can't do forever, but it can help improve insulin resistance. And, and when you come off of these specialty diets, there are little tricks that you can do to sustain the benefits. So for instance, I tell my diabetics that if they have a meal where they're indulging and there's a lot of carbs in that meal or dessert or both. Yeah. <laughs> and a uh, simple, simple thing is you can just go for a walk shortly after the meal and it'll burn off some of the sugars and the carbs. Okay, and, that's yeah. a good tip. And in the 70s, there was a very popular way of eating that's called food combining. Okay which is actually food separating. Mm -hmm. So it's based on the fact that your liver, your stomach, and your pancreas digest your foods differently. And that if you mix carbs, which are best digested in an alkaline environment, with protein, which are best digested in a high acid state, that if you have meat with your bread to make a sandwich, that your body's going to have an intermediate pH and nothing's going to get digested as completely, as optimally as if you had just the meat or just the bread. With vegetables too, though, if, if you were going to add that in, correct? So vegetables, many of them vegetables, you can have vegetables with the pasta or vegetables with the meat. But as soon as you put the meat with the pasta, your digestion can drop. Okay, I remember that. I remember reading the book called Fit for Life. That's the one. That's exactly. the one. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, so digestion declines with age. It's, it's at about half by the time we're age 50. So a lot of people shortly after turning age 50, we talk a lot about these little things just as a non-supplement way to to feel good and to normalize their digestion and their energy. And and for those times when you did everything wrong, you ate the big meal late at night, tons of carbs, didn't go for a walk, then you can still compensate with something like a peppermint tea. So peppermint tea helps you with digesting and you can mix it with chamomile. So if you feel like the food is sitting in your stomach and it didn't move along, it's more upper in the in the belly than I would say have a peppermint tea. And if it's more lower, it's a couple hours, one to three hours or more after you ate and you're feeling like bloated, then I would say chamomile tea. Chamomile tea is really good anti-inflammatory and it helps the body expel gas. <laughs> I did not know that. I always thought about chamomile tea as just something to help you sleep. It does that too. It does that too. Yeah. Okay. It calms the nerves and it calms butterflies in the stomach. But peppermint and chamomile taste great together, mixed together in one tea as well. I I would like it better. Yeah. Chamomile if it was. Yeah. 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 The peppermint. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Great things to know here. Yeah. Yeah. And and many herbs and spices, if you look at cultural recipes, there's every culture has its favorite herbs and spices that they're yes. known for. And if you study the medicinal properties of these herbs and spices, a lot of them have to do with digestion. Okay. And that is why they would be used mm-hmm. 
Yeah, in the yep. in the cooking. Right, yeah. or, or the drinking of bitters, having a shot of some alcoholic bitters before your schnitzels, right? Yes, <laughs> yes, all those things, right? Mm-hmm. We don't think about that, right? On yeah. how yep. it's almost like chemistry and how things work together. It's definitely chemistry, and, and I love as the years go by, learning the science behind these things that I've grown up with or that I've seen in other cultures. Exactly. So so using as many herbs and spices as possible in your cooking is great, especially if you can use them in a raw state. So adding the parsley, the cilantro into your salads. For yes. Some, right? And, um, and there's also some science behind in which order do you eat the food? Okay, that I find fascinating. Right. So you have a dinner plate, and you've got the broccoli, the meat, and the potatoes. You get the fiber in first. So you eat all the broccoli, and then you eat all the meat, and then you eat all the carbs, the carbs. The potatoes. And so that kind of gives the sugar response and the insulin response a better chance at having less damage from the hit of having a serving of mashed potatoes okay so, so it's subtle all the, all the all of these little things are subtle so i would recommend that the listeners you know test out a few of these and you can test out all of them if you want but i just share all these things with patients and they pick the ones that they resonate with and and implement it and see how it feels see how how it works and then keep it as a permanent lifestyle change yeah that is so interesting I've never thought about doing that with the food, the order of the food. Mm -hmm. It makes sense, but we're so used to eating that plate. And, you know, you want a little bit of potatoes and then your meat and then, okay, now I'll have some broccoli. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to try that one first, I think. Yeah. Yeah. And then also people trying to get their water in. It's not a good idea to get your water in before or during your meal. So when you're body is expecting dinner and you're thinking oh great i'm having pasta tonight i'm so excited that's my favorite meal (laughs) and you're and then you come home you see it you smell it you're serving it it's coming onto the table all those steps along the way your brain is telling your stomach here comes the food and you start increasing your production of digestive enzymes and your stomach's waiting with this nice little handful of digestive enzymes waiting for the dinner to come in to the mm-hmm. body and the worst thing you can do is go and guzzle a bunch of water and wash away all those enzymes oh my that's what will happen mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. another thing i didn't think about <laughs> exactly and, wow. and and my friends laugh at me when when i go out to dinner i eat whatever i want right and and i'm not a naturopath if i'm out celebrating and i'm out for dinner it's not what i cook at home like I never make French fries at home, ever, ever. Right? Yes, yes. But if I go out and I want French fries, I want sweet potato fries, I will have sweet potato fries. But my friends laugh because they always know that I'm going to order hot water with lemon. And, you know, the waiters come, they bring you water. There's ice in the yes. water. And, and I just look at it and I, I don't drink it. But I ask for hot water with lemon. And it's because the lemon helps your liver release the bile so if you're going to have something that's higher in fat it's easier to digest that and so i can eat whatever i want and i can feel good during and after the meal and i'm not going home bloated or tired i go home feeling good that's interesting also because i find that when i do feel bloated that's what i'm craving is the hot water with lemon but are you suggesting drinking it after you've eaten or during the meal? Either. I, I okay. tend to sip at it through the meal. So you don't okay. want to drink a lot of fluids during the during meal, the meal. No, no. But if you're drinking um, the hot water with lemon and the meal itself is a little on the dry side, so if you're having something like meat. Yes. And there's not a lot of high water content in a meal like that. So it's okay to sip a little bit of wine or hot water with lemon yeah. um, to add to the moisture of the meal. But... But that's that's my favorite way to go out to eat is with some hot water and lemon. Okay. Oh, mm-hmm. my gosh. Great, great tips and mm-hmm. ideas and information. Mm-hmm. Wow. 
And it's think gross? of chewing our food. Right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, let's so, talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so chewing chewing is the first step of digestion. And all of us are guilty of eating too quickly, eating on the run, eating in front of a laptop or something yes. like that. Oh, yeah. But it's really important to be in a relaxed state. It's It's best to just set aside those few minutes and to sit at a table like a human with a plate and a fork and and focus yourself on I'm eating now in a peaceful state and uh so so there's just so many little it's it's just a little pile of suggestions that I have that can make a big difference and we can all do those starting today. Exactly. At home. There's nothing, there's no equipment we need to do exactly, this. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, well, that is fantastic. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we say goodbye? No, oh, those are all my favorites. Okay. <laughs> I love them. I think you've given us a lot to start with. And, uh, well, never mind start. We could just implement any or all of those. And, uh, as you said, make a permanent change in our lifestyle and our eating habits. Exactly. And, uh, yeah, please try some of these and let us know how it works for you. We would love to hear from you. We would love to answer any of your questions. If you have any suggestions at all, please add them. Please give us your comments. And uh, I guess that's about it. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Bye.